Yemen, where we see the Houthis growing in prominence and significance on the uh, international stage. Uh, we've seen the Houthis, which are uh, su supplied and uh, somewhat propped up by the Iranians, mm -hmm. once again the Iranians, uh, carry out now more than three dozen attacks on commercial vessels that are transiting the bodies of water surrounding Yemen's coast, and it's a very commonly used waterway. So we've seen over the last couple months as these attacks have continued, international shipping companies look to reroute their tankers and their their <clears throat> all of their vessels away from this region, uh, which adds time to all of their uh, transits. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle, and I'm joined by defense reporter Mike Brest. Mike, Iraq isn't a country that we've talk a lot about anymore, given that we're far removed from the war, but there has been some hostilities there involving the United States recently. Talk about where the status of some talks between Iraq and the United States is and what's going on. So the U.S. still maintains a military presence in Iraq. They have about 2,500 troops there. They've been there now for about 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, and at the time that they s this agreement started, they were dealing with uh, the height of ISIS. Right. And so ISIS for seven years now has not had any strong territorial holds, but the U.S. Uh, in an advisory and assist capacity continue to help uh, train Iraqi forces and carry out uh, dual or coalition missions to target ISIS so that they uh, can continue not to reconstitute. Mm -hmm. uh, now we've seen over the last several months some small victories for ISIS uh, and some of their offshoots in other parts of the Middle East. Uh, but so the U.S. has this presence there that is focused on the lasting defeat of ISIS. Mm -hmm. Back in August, the U.S. or the Pentagon and the Iraqi uh, government agreed to uh, sometime in the future revisit what their military relationship looks like right. uh, and essentially evaluate whether or not the U.S. presence and their advisory and assist capacity is still necessary or whether that should shift in some capacity. Uh, we found out this week that those talks will be coming up in the next coming days. Uh, we've heard from a number of different defense officials that this is not uh, a talk to, com you know, a talk about the uh, reduction of a U.S. footprint or the removal of U.S. troops from Iraq entirely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that being said, it comes at a very tenuous time in the U.S.-Iraqi Iraqi relationship because the, uh, there are Iranian-backed militias in Iraq and in uh, Syria that have carried out uh, now more than 150 attacks on U.S. troops and U.S. bases in Iraq and Syria. Uh, and so these attacks are largely, uh, you know, largely don't hurt anyone. However, since they've carried out 150, we have seen service members hurt. Right. Uh, and so there was a big attack last week. Uh, four U.S. service members were diagnosed with what they call as TBI or concussions or head injuries, right. uh, though they've all since returned to duty. The U.S., after this big strike last week, carried out its own strike targeting these one of these militias that they believe were, was responsible for this attack, and they've done that here and there. But the U.S. response, as it has been throughout much of the Middle East over the last couple months, is really designed and focused on one goal, and that's to prevent the widening of the conflict between Israel and Hamas in the region. And so Iran obviously plays a pretty big role in this and, and there'd be Iraqis concerned about there being some kind of wider conflict involving Iran, no? That's 100% true. And so we also can take it to Yemen where we see the Houthis growing in prominence and significance on the uh, international stage. Uh, we've seen the Houthis which are uh, su supplied and uh, somewhat propped up by the Iranians, mm -hmm. once again the Iranians, uh, carry out now more than three dozen attacks on commercial vessels that are transiting the bodies of water surrounding Yemen's coast, and it's a very commonly used waterway. So we've seen over the last couple months as these attacks have continued, international shipping companies look to reroute their tankers and their, their <clears throat> all of their vessels away from this region uh, which adds time to all of their uh, transits. So the United States has conducted some strikes against the Houthis. President Biden has faced questions about the effectiveness. What a, talk a little bit about the U.S. response to what's going on over there. So the U.S. says they are doing this to defend the 
right of these companies to use this waterway, uh, this international waterway. Mm -hmm. And so the U.S., uh, President Biden, Secretary Austin, other senior leaders have said that they will continue to carry out these attacks as long as the Houthis continue to carry out attacks themselves. And so we've seen now over the last couple of days, the U.S. military get a little bit more uh, proactive in their military response where they have over the last couple of days actually fired their own airstrikes when they believed the Houthis were prepared to fire their own. Mm -hmm. And so the U.S. has uh, targeted the Houthis now, uh, you know, more than a handful of times. Uh, and we're seeing what, what CENTCOM described uh, with a name and a task force. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're seeing sort of a burgeoning, uh, growing con conflict that the OD says isn't a conflict. Yet we're seeing the U.S. and the Houthis engage in back and forth attacks. Thank you, Mike. You can read Mike and the rest of our national security team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.